That construction site mishap happened early this morning in the Miller development of East Austin. First responders say no one was hurt by the cranes themselves just during the panic that followed after the accident. Our Luis De Leon live at the scene. He's been there all afternoon. Luis, any change there this evening? Yeah, Brian, just minutes ago, we saw those cranes completely separate. I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. Let's start with the crane over on the right side here, that black crane. You can see a piece of the red crane that was over on the left that's still sort of tangled up onto there. You can see some of the wires that are in a sort of tighter position, but this crane, it did not fall. It would appear that there was someone inside of the cab lowering this at the same time as the red crane was moving away from it. So now you can see this crane here is uh, pretty much almost up onto this dirt hill next to the construction site. Let's go over to the left side of the screen now. This is that red crane where we've been talking about how the cab operator has been up there throughout the day. And we can really see why now as we just witnessed the operation take place of separating these two cranes. Uh, the crane operator started by moving the crane all the way to the left and as soon as the other crane that's now up against the dirt hill, it, he completely maneuvered and uh, is in the position that he is in there right now. We also did just see uh, at least one Austin fire unit leave the scene. We reported earlier today that a majority of the injuries out of the crane collision that happened this morning are turning out to be minor and the 16 people who were transported were taken to several local hospitals spread out throughout Austin. Now, as for the crane operator, that person, uh, we just saw what he was doing before, and that person is still appears to still be inside of the operating cab, which officials say is nearly 150 feet high. But they iterated, and like I said, we really kind of saw why that operator was in there now, that he was not in any danger and is actually serving as a secondary safety. Now, earlier today, we spoke to a tower crane operator who has 40 years of experience, who says typically when something like this happens, they'll have the operator up there in order to control the crane just in case winds were to pick up so he can control where the other crane is tangled to go just in case things started to sway around a lot more. Take a listen to what he said earlier. He's not up there just to sit there. He's up there to prevent that crane, to keep that crane exactly where it's at until they can get the engineers to look at it to decide what they need to do and get the personnel up there to un unhook those two, get them, get them unhooked. OSHA has been on scene investigating because we are still trying to figure out what exactly led to the crane collision this morning. Brian. Hey, Luis, you were speaking to the crane operator there. Did he say how much training an operator must go through before working one of these cranes? So he didn't get into many specifics as to how much exact training goes into becoming a crane operator, but he has trained several people in his 40 years of experience. He does believe though that there should be more training. And of course, when it comes, he also said when it comes to uh, a situation like you see right behind me, it usually comes from something like communication uh, or miscommunication rather from all crew members on the site. Brian. All right, Luis DeLeon reporting for us in the Miller Development. Luis, thank you very much.